Chapter 59 Teo Virada Teo struggled to maintain his focus on maintaining his geometry against the pounding of the smoke within. Once more, he told Rat urgently. Liliana, who couldn't see or hear Rat, and wasn't at all sure what was going on, save for the fact that she knew she was missing something, said, Who are you talking to? What am I missing here? Teo just barely heard the false Liliana whisper. You fools! You're going to get us all killed! Teo repeated, Once more! And Rat slammed the amulet against the table again, shattering the amulet into fragments. Immediately, the fall zombies disappeared, and Liliana transformed into an old woman. But the most significant result by far was the tremendous quantity of smoke that poured forth from the shattered jewel. It was only then that Teo realized the full extent of his miscalculation. He thought he had been holding the jinn in his fear, but he now knew he was only holding a fragment of the entity's essence. He now knew that this jinn wasn't simply larger than any he'd ever encountered on Goba Khan. It was flat out huge and hugely powerful. The only saving grace was that the jinn couldn't fully reform yet because Teo was holding a fraction of itself within his geometry. But that was not a saving grace destined to last very long. The big smoke cloud began forming lightning inside the house. Teo's eyes went wide, and he struggled to raise a four-point shield while simultaneously maintaining the sphere. But just then, an older woman, a collared servant, entered the room from the back of the house and screamed in response to the tableau before her. That scream distracted Teo just enough. A bolt of lightning struck his weak four-pointer. It shattered like the sapphire, and Teo was sent flying. He heard Rat call out his name, or was it Kaya or Liliana, as he struggled to clear his head. Ah, uh, I'm okay. Uh, I'm okay. Not you, Liliana called out. Your sphere! Teo looked up, realizing he'd lost the geometry on his sphere. The smoke within was merging with the smoke without, and the great jinn was reforming. Blue skin, glowing blue eyes pointed ears, tattoos, black hair, black eyebrows, and a long, thin, black mustache. Or sometimes his hair was hair, and sometimes it was just dark smoke swirling and dancing alongside the blue smoke that comprised his spirit. The jinn stared down at Teo as his voice boomed out, Zahid will have vengeance! Zahid! Vengeance! On you all. Through the smoky haze and his hazy grasp on consciousness, Teo spotted Rat tossing what appeared to be Bolus's spirit gem to the real Liliana. For reasons he couldn't begin to explain, this gave him hope. Chapter 60 Tomic Vrana Tomic was just unlocking the door. He had been hoping against hope that Rall would be here in their apartment, waiting for him, fresh from his victory over Tezzeret. I won't. I can't. Think about the alternative. The reality was somewhere in between. Before he'd taken two steps inside, before he'd put down the bag of groceries or even closed the door, Rall Zarek planeswalked home. He seemed to be on his hands and knees in the air, two feet above the floor. He promptly fell that short distance and landed hard, bouncing a little on the hard wood floor. Tomic dropped the grocery bag and rushed to his side, tripping over something that sent him stumbling into Rall, who groaned painfully upon impact. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Tomic breathed out. He'd never seen his man like this, beaten, bloody, bruised, maybe broken. His entire face was swollen, almost to the point of being unrecognizable. 
There was a nasty burn on his forehead, black goop matting down his hair, and he began hacking and coughing up blood. Karlov's ghost? Ral, what happened? Ral looked up at him. Tears were forming in his black, bruised and swollen eyes. He didn't, maybe couldn't, speak. No, shh. Sorry. Never mind that now. Let me get you into bed, then I'll summon a healer. He tried to lift Ral, but his lover was like dead weight in his arms. It took all his strength, and he nearly tripped over the same damn metal whatever he tripped over moments before. He took a second look and realized it was Tezzeret's arm. You did it, he said with forced enthusiasm, trying to buck his lover's spirits up. You took out Tezzeret. He got his shots in, but you got him. Raoul didn't respond, but Tomic realized he was struggling just to breathe. He lowered him onto the bed where they'd made love the night before. Blood soaked into the sheets. Tomic was working very hard not to cry, at least not in front of Raoul. Sucking it up, Tomic said, It'll be alright. It's over now. You won. Raoul just looked up into Tomic's eyes and said nothing. Tomic wanted to kiss him, but there didn't seem to be a square inch on his face where a kiss wouldn't cause him more pain. I'm proud of you, Raoul. I'll get the healer. He rushed away from the bed so that Raoul couldn't see him break down completely. Chapter 61 Liliana Vess Forming out of the smoke, the massive gin seemed to fill the grand salon from floor to ceiling, from wall to wall, to wall to wall. The fact that there was still space in the room for the forgery, the woman Kaya, the boy Teo, the servant, Karina, and herself seemed like a minor miracle to Liliana Vess. The jinn glared down at Teo and boomed, Zahid will have revenge! And just then, someone called out, It's Liliana! Over here! Liliana turned. A few feet away stood a girl, where there had been no girl before. She was holding Bolus's spirit gem and tossed it vanishing even as the egg left her hand. Instinctively, a confused Liliana caught the mystic bauble, and suddenly someone else was there that hadn't been there before. For a brief, horrifying moment, she thought it was Nicol Bolas, back from the dead. Or maybe Bolas's ghost, as the dragon hovering before her was decidedly transparent. But, but no, the horns are all wrong. The expression too, thank the gods. Whomever the creature was, he did bear a striking resemblance, however, to her former tormentor. There's something dangerous in the smile that he and Bolas have in common. If this smile seems kinder, that should make me want to trust it less. But somehow, she didn't trust it less. She tried to get her head around what she was seeing. Is this his astral form, or maybe just a vision, or a hallucination? Maybe I finally lost my mind, completely. A voice sounded telepathically in her mind, saying, Perhaps it is all of these things. Again, the voice sounded kinder and infinitely more benign than Bolas. Yet... There is an undeniable similarity as well. It's less than surprising, said the dragon. My name is Eugene, a spirit dragon, and Nicol Bolas's somewhat less evil twin. As reassuring introductions go, that one is less than compelling, a suspicious Liliana sent back. With Bolas, her four demons, the Onaki spirits, the Raven Man, and all their attempts to use and manipulate her circling her consciousness. I understand your caution, but you'll see I have no desire to be numbered among your manipulators. Said every manipulator ever. 
true. Just get to it or end whatever this is. As you wish. The spirit gem in your hand was made from my essence and has summoned my spirit to you. It belongs to Bolas. Bolas took what did not belong to him. That cannot come as a surprise. No, I suppose not. The gem has established a link between us. Know that the child who gave it to you sacrificed much to put it in your hand. Do not squander the opportunity. What opportunity? The spirit gem now cleansed of Bolus' influence has the power to help you become your true best self, Liliana Vess. But you must want that. You will have to choose. Choose what? Perhaps what Gideon Jura believed you merited. Don't. Don't you bring him into this. He's done enough. What would he want for you, Liliana Vess? Stop. Eugene remained silent, waiting. He'd... He'd want me to... to try. Eugene nodded once and slowly faded from view. Wait. Wait. Where are you? Vengeance on you all! Liliana's eyes swept back to the djinn. It was as if no time whatsoever had passed during her conversation with the transparent and perhaps imaginary dragon. The djinn still loomed over the groggy, recovering boy. <laughs> this Sahid wanted vengeance and didn't seem too particular about whom he took it out upon. And I will start with you, little man. Then, as if she hadn't already faced more than enough psychic meddling for any one lifetime, something or someone in Liliana's mind, like a psychic voice, but less distinct, urged her to save Teo. She glanced down at the spirit gem still in her hand, and was surprised to find that she did want to save him, to save one of the plane's walkers sent to kill her, even if she didn't quite know why. Am I being influenced? By the quiet voice? By Eugene? By the gem? She took half a second to clear her head, to evaluate and separate all external influence from Liliana Vess. No, the boy talked Kaya out of killing me. He tried to save me. I want to save him. So, that took care of the why, but didn't exactly reveal anything about the how. You will suffer for the crime of trying to contain the mighty Zahid. That's when she heard yet more inner voices, moaning. Vessel. Chapter 62 Kaya. Zahid will have vengeance, vengeance on you all, and I will start with you, little man. You will suffer for the crime of trying to contain the mighty Zahid. Seeing Teo in imminent danger, Kaya pushed the former fall Liliana aside and leapt. Her daggers plunged into the djinn's back and he was just solid enough in that moment to cry out in real pain. But he instantly transformed into smoke, and she tumbled right through him, unable to ghost fast enough to avoid a very solid and very large fist that batted her across the room. She slammed into a love seat that flipped backward on top of her, as she struggled to push the piece of furniture off and clear her head. Aya looked up. Both the servant and her former mistress were cowering before the djinn's wrath. Liliana stood stock still, but Rat was now next to Teo, struggling to shake his head clear. As always, the young acolyte responded valiantly, 
Reaching out with one hand, he attempted to contain Zahid in another large sphere, but a small percentage of the jinn's smoke remained uncaptured, and both the jinn and the smoke began fighting back, pounding upon the construct from within and without as his voice echoed throughout the house. Again, you seek to bind me again? Now, your torments shall last an eternity. Extricating herself from beneath the love seat, I could see cracks forming in the sphere, and it seemed clear Teo wouldn't be able to hold Zahid for long. Then, Liliana, the real Liliana, called out, let him go! Liliana turned toward the djinn, and Kaya could now see her in profile, wearing the chain veil she had used to control the Eternals. Is that a good sign? Or bad? Liliana's voice reverberated from behind the veil. Release the djinn, Teo! Ayo, for obvious reasons, seemed reluctant to comply with Liliana's command. Uh, I don't know. He won't let me grab him a third time. Rat said, It'll be alright. Ayo looked Rat in the eyes, nodded with implicit trust, and dropped his hand. The sphere evaporated, and immediately Zahid reached for Teo, only to find himself blocked by the Veil's Onaki spirits. Hundreds of them, maybe thousands. Holy ancients! The spirits prevented the jinn's hand from reaching Teo. Zahid transformed his entire arm into blue smoke, but they blocked that too, sucking the smoke in through their open shrieking mouths. They surrounded him, encircled him, rotated around him like a planetary ring with screaming faces. Then the jinn himself began to scream. Kaya moved toward Liliana, calling out, What are you doing? Liliana's reply was cold as a midnight crypt. I'm doing what every necromancer is born to do. I am draining the life force from my enemy. Rat asked, You're doing it? Or the veil? Then she nudged Teo to repeat the question for Liliana. He did. Are you doing this, or, or is it the veil? Again, the cold voice responded. The Chael vein and the Onaki spirits are increasing my power, but the sorcery is mine. Rat prompted Teo. Tell her to stop. He repeated what Rat told him, practically word for word. Stop. The djinn was just another victim here. Angry, lashing out. He does not deserve to die. Aya approached Liliana tentatively. Beads of sweat had formed on the necromancer's brow. The muscles in her face were taut. She was straining against something. But whether it was the Onaki or Zahid or her own worst impulses was impossible to say. But Rat's words via Teo seemed to be getting through her. We cannot right a wrong with another wrong the two teenagers said consecutively. There has to be a way for us to show mercy. Liliana spoke in that sepulchral voice. Do you hear the boy, Zahid? We are not your enemies, but your saviors. We offer you freedom, freedom and mercy. But we have one condition, one wish before we release you. Leave Caligo and its people, and us, alone. Fighting through the pain, the djinn glared at Liliana, then nodded. I agree to your terms, with one exception. I want Liliana this. Rat, Teo, and Kaya all turned toward Liliana. Her face behind the chain veil revealed little but Kaya was close enough by this time to hear her inhale and exhale softly, close enough to see the slight nod of acquiescence. The necromancer said, You and these others may not deserve to die, but Liliana Vest certainly does. 
you walked forward, and with lowered head, a willing lamb ready for slaughter, saying, You may have... But just then, the other Liliana shouted in protest, You can't let him have me! I am the great Liliana Vess! It was only then that the real Liliana, not to mention Kaya, Teo, and Rat, realized whom Zahid was actually referring to. Liliana took a step back, and Kaya could almost sense the cruel smile on her face. She removed her collar, revealing the blackened dead skin underneath. Then she crossed to Liliana and spoke low enough so that only her imposter and Kaya could hear. You fool. I am Liliana Vess. The fall Liliana stared back at her uncomprehendingly, then incredulously. Then finally the truth began to sink in, as did the terror. No, no, I, I'm sorry, please. But Liliana had already turned away from the woman whose true name none of them would ever know. With a tremendous effort, a grasping of her hands, and an unholy roar, the original Liliana wrenched the Onaki spirits away from the djinn and forced them all back into the veil. Free of pain, the djinn's posture finally relaxed. He looked around the room, at Liliana, at Kaya, at the old servant, at Teo, and said, Yes, I have thrown my net too wide. There are victims here I was forced to hurt. Saviors here who helped me escape. You have my apologies and my thanks, mortals. Rat called out, Don't mention it. But Zahid didn't hear, and, in any case, wasn't quite done. But there is one, he said, turning toward the spare Liliana. One who deserves nothing but wrath. Fast as flame, he took up the imposter in his smoking, fiery fist. She screamed as he began burning her alive. One, I will not soon release. He laughed. The real Liliana didn't seem to mind watching the torture with burning eyes, but Rat cried out, No! Belatedly, Kaya leapt toward the djinn once again. With her long daggers brandished, she stabbed Liliana to put the woman out of her misery, doing her a favor she hardly deserved by at least ending her suffering. The servant woman gasped, and Zahid roared, swinging at Kaya again, but this time she was ready. This time his hand passed right through her ghosted form. Liliana seemed to snap out of her own bloodlust then. She said, I warn you, Zahid, do not reignite this conflict. You've had your vengeance, brief though it was. The woman is dead. Now leave while you still can. Zahid brooded for a few seconds, the blue and black smoke roiling around his scowling face. Then, without warning, he departed, rocketing away as a comet of flame and smoke, creating a massive hole in the roof he had only recently helped repair. Smoking wood and plaster fell down upon Rat, Teo, Liliana, Kaya, the servant, and the charred smoking corpse of Liliana Vess. All but the latter covered their heads with their hands as the debris fell, leaving the house of Vess in something of a ruin once again. After standing there in silence for some brief but endless amount of time, Rat said, Tell Liliana to take the veil off now. Teo swallowed and said, To... Take the veil off now, please. Another pause ensued. Then, with what seemed like another difficult internal struggle, Liliana removed the veil from her face. Kaya could only wonder aloud, Now what? 